I got my transom closed in and it's looking pretty fly back there. Before I had all this work done to it, I had an open transom platform. And I always thought the concept of an open transom was really cool. The water can easily flow off the back of your boat, but water could also easily flow into your boat. And six months ago, I was about 10 miles offshore. We hit a wave and I heard a loud crack and our transom had cracked below the water line. We were taking on water and we eventually did end up limping back home and we made it home safe. Word to the wise, if you have a boat that's like 10, 15, 20 years old, get your transom checked. Make sure it's not rotten, make sure your transom is stable. And after that incident, I decided to get my transom closed in and we also put a dive bracket on the back. 26 inches by 80 inches. It's a big boy. Is it worth closing in your transom? I'll take you through the whole process of the old transom getting taken off putting the new one on then we put her back in the water we see how she handles we'll see if it changes the top end speed we'll talk about how much it costs and we'll talk a little bit about everything so stay tuned because we're about to go six months back in time to when my transom first broke and I bring it to the shop to get it fixed I've been going a little crazy I haven't shaved there she is Damn. Take a good look. I've had so much free time. I built a bird sanctuary here. Bird bath, bird feeder, another bird feeder, another bird bath. I got piles of pepper trees everywhere. That pile, that pile. Look at that pile. <laughs> I got piles of pepper trees everywhere. I've been doing some serious gardening because what else is there to do? So we're gonna pull the cars out, I'm gonna drop the boat into the water, and we're gonna take the trailer out here and we're gonna bring it to a ramp somewhere, take it up and we should be good to go. We got Captain Dan. Yeah, here we are. Here to help. We actually got the Range Rover started, hooked up, we're gonna drop her in. The range is shifting all sorts of weird, so hopefully she doesn't decide to pop out of park and roll into the water, but. <laughs> oh boy. All right, here we go experiment. All right, this is me. I'm gonna hold it when it goes in the water. Can you see? stubborn about going in the drive sometimes. <laughs> Right here, right now. Oh, yeah, look, she's floating. She's floating right to her dock. Looks great. Oh my, it's like she knows where to go. <laughs> I wonder how much water is coming into the transom right now. All right, we're leaving the dock, or I'm leaving the dock. Dan actually took the Range Rover. He's going to try to somehow make it work. So I'm thinking either Dan breaks down on the way or I sink, but one of us is not gonna make it to the destination. <laughs> Just kidding. We're working on it, boys. Check it out, she's still holding on. She is holding on. sight to see. Beauty. Well, we got the boat out of the water, but axle snapped. See it in there? It snapped right off. Damage. All right, we're gonna try to take the tires off and
tried taking the bolts out and they just ripped off. How are you, how are you feeling, Dan? That doesn't, you, doesn't get any better than this. You signed, you signed up for this. <laughs> you probably won't answer my call next time I ask you to... Ico who? Quickly trailer who? the boat somewhere. Ico? Ico? What, what, what's that? Boom, first tire off. You see the leaf spring broke here. Got that tire off. All right, about to jack this one up. Yeah. We're back in game, baby. This is the, kind of the moment of truth here. Please don't roll. That might be good enough. Uh, nope. Just a couple more. One, two. Oh, that sounds nice. Yeah. Victory is so close. I say you didn't work for this. You worked hard for this. You know, I always, I live by the rule. If it can go wrong, it will go wrong. Murphy's, Murphy's Law. Yes. That's the one. I might need to get the... Wow. That leaf spring just dropped down. The whole axle just dropped down. Oh. Yeah, that's a problem. Uh, we're gonna have to just lift it up and, and stick rope it on it. top of it. Yeah, maybe rope it up there. Yeah, or something. something. Yeah, not good. Not good. Definitely a problem. Good news is that axle straightened out when the pressure came off it. See what I mean? I could probably no. We can't drive like that. All right. We got the axle tied off so it doesn't drag on the ground. What? <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> uh, yeah, the tires are low on air. <laughs> Add that to the list. Real low. Luckily, there's an air filling station right there. Here we go. A blessing. Is it working? I don't know if there's enough air in the oh, compressor. Oh, no. the compressor. Boom, shazam. Air in the tires. Dan, are we gonna make it? Yes, we're gonna make it, man. We are gonna make it. We, listen, we made it this far. We're gonna make it. We gotta drive two miles down the road now to bring it to fiberglass repair for the transom to be rebuilt. <laughs> oh gosh, all right, let's do it. All right, we made it. Look at that, tire made it. On a wing and a... The very first thing that had to be done is assess the amount of damage that the transom took. First, the entire wood transom was cut out and removed from the boat, leaving only this fiberglass left. Now we can take a look at the floor wood and all the wood in the stringers. And luckily, from what we see, that wood is still good. There's no issues with it. And it was just simply a rotten transom. So we're not gonna have to replace stringers, just the transom. Phew. That would have been a lot more expensive. You can see my bilge pumps in here. And just above that, you see this uh, door? This is gonna be the new floor hatch for me to get to the bilge pumps and everything. The old one's right there under it, but the new one's gonna be much bigger and it's gonna be much easier for me to get to my bilge pumps and just work on things back there. It used to be real crammed. 
Also, the wall to my previous splash well is gonna be fully cut out, which opens a huge area in the back of the boat for me. And this right here is the old transom. Check it out. You can see that the wood on it is kind of just falling apart. And in the areas where the bolts were, the wood looks a little black, a little moldy, a little brown. It's just not a good looking transom. And we're gonna replace this transom with Kusa instead of wood. I don't have any video of my Kusa board, but here's a picture of what it would look like. Instead of wood, these Kusa boards are made out of a polyurethane foam that's interwoven with fiberglass strands. They're supposed to never rot and be extremely strong, and it comes with a lifetime guarantee that it's not gonna rot. And the Kusa board has been fiberglassed onto the transom of the boat, and the transom is officially closed in. And the whole thing just feels extremely sturdy. I'm already liking it. Feels good. The inside of the boat is starting to take shape. There's still a lot of work to be done. The splash well still needs to be cut out. The transom still needs to be sanded down and then gel coated, but we're getting there. Tyrone explains a little to me how he plans on cutting the splash well out, taking the old door out and putting a bigger door into the floor. Then he shows me the reinforcement brackets under the transom and the additional supports he put inside to make this thing a beast. I told him I never want to see this thing crack again. The inside is looking dirty, dirty, but don't worry, that's gonna get cleaned up. Check it out. It's the aluminum engine bracket or dive platform, whatever you want to call it. This is a picture of it before it got a gel coat put on. This is the side of the bracket that's going to get bolted onto the transom of the boat. And this is the back of the bracket that the engine is going to bolt to. Now let's see what it looks like after getting gel coated and bolted to the transom. We finished it up. I, I would have finished the old week and I was sick. Damn. Yeah. Man, that bracket is looking good with that shiny white gel coat on it. The trim tabs are still missing. The transducer is still missing. And of course the engine is still missing, but come on, we're almost there guys. Now let's take a look on the inside. You can see the new floor hatch is already cut out. That's some easy access to my bilge pumps. It's coming. I can see the light at the end of the tunnel. Do you feel it? My boat is officially done the transom work, the bracket is on it. Right now I'm waiting for Tyrone. He's gonna bring it here to LaBeouf's outboards. And these guys here are gonna put my engine back on. So I should have my boat in about a week, but I'm just waiting for Tyrone. Oh my, there she is. Oh yeah, baby. Yeehaw. Heck yeah. I would cry so hard if a car smashed into it right now. He's doing it. He's doing it. He's here. She's made it. Oh, shit. Those cars were close. <laughs> Oh yeah. Trim tabs are on. Drain plug is on. Transducer is on. Now we just need the engine. Let's see what the inside looks like. Yeah, boy. She should be ready to pick up in one week. I hurt my phone. <laughs> Damn. That was a big door y'all carried. Yeah, that thing was heavy. Guys, I got crazy good news. I just got the phone call that my boat is ready for pickup. <laughs> First, I'm gonna pick up Dan, cause he's gonna help me pick up the boat, hook it up. We're gonna put it in at John Penny camp. Then we're gonna take it home and then we're gonna see how it freaking rides. Woo! Got my camera bag. I'm about to strap my GoPro on so that way I can deal with the boat and not have a camera in my hand. Got a big bucket of water cause you gotta stay hydrated when you're on a mission. Let's go. Wow, I am almost out of fuel, but I should have just enough. I feel pretty good right about now. <laughs> All right, cool. Ah. <laughs> they look like there is a few good days coming up. Of course, you're getting your boat back. They're <laughs> waiting for you. That's what's been going on. She still needs to be started in neutral, though. So two clicks, neutral. Oh, neutral? Okay. And then, but, oh, yeah. Whew. Holy macaroni. 
Holy shit. <laughs> what do you think about that? Uh, it's been a long time, boat. I haven't seen you in a while. Remember the days? Remember? We put a lot of blood on this boat. Wow, looking sharp. So this 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 little screw is leaking. See that it's leaking right now. Uh -huh. So hopefully the steering holds till I get to the dock, you know, and then mm -hmm. I'll pull that out. It's just hydraulic. I, I think it'll work. be fine. Worst case, I'll pee into it. All right, well, I gotta go in and pay, I think. <sighs> All right, man, take care. Thank you. Yep. Oh my gosh, I guess we don't have that far to go, so it's all good. Yeah, I'm just gonna take it nice and easy, you know. Don't pull in front of me, bro. I will not stop. I cannot stop. Yeah, I don't think I will ever want trailer this boat out of the keys again. It's gonna die here. Someone's gonna have to pick it up if they want it. John Penny Camp, we have arrived with the boat. Hello. Um, I'm just dropping the boat and bringing it home after six months. My name's Ranger Mary. I'm also famous. Nice. <laughs> I, work here. I feel like I've it's met you before. Name, right? Yeah, Heiko. Heiko. Yeah. And your friend? Dan. What is it? Dan. Dan? Yeah. Dan the man. Yeah. Nice so why are you famous? I've here longer than any of the other rangers, so I'm the senior ranger, even though I'm not super old. So on the website as like ah, the nice. For this yeah. Ranger. Anyway, you guys are good to go. You're oh welcome. heck yeah! Uh, this one's on me. Thanks a lot. Thank you. We appreciate Have a good it. one. Bye. Well, she was nice. Very nice. I can't believe it's all coming down to this. This is going a lot smoother than. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> all right, I will say no more. Looks like there's no other boats here, so we can take our sweet dandelion time. Let's just give it a quick little peek, eh? <laughs> oh my, dilly wagger. Oh my gosh. Okay, drain plug. It's in. I mean, it, I can't move it with my hand. I do have a wrench if I should give it an extra tightening. Then it won't sink. All right. Oh, this is intense. <laughs> Eww. Oh my gosh. It says I have zero percent fuel. I hope I have enough to get home. <laughs> yeah. Hello. You want me to pull you on the boat? No, it's okay. Okay. Ah, okay. <laughs> oh, perfect. Thank you so much. All right. Yeah. Oh my god. 
Almost home, almost made it. I hope I remember how to do this. I still got it. Even with all this wind. Oh, how's it feel? Real good. It he's feels. Back, he's back, he's back. It feels real good. All right. Captain. One rope, please. Captain. I didn't get to actually test her out though because the the entrance is right there, and I, I didn't want to push my luck. And it said I had zero percent fuel, so I was like, eh. Oh. Oh, nothing like a wow. cerveza. Nice and cold. I am a happy man right now. I'm gonna pop on some tunes, clean it up a bit, polish it up, and we're gonna take her for a test spin probably tomorrow. Fuel her up. I just cleaned the boat and I'm freaking out. Hey, hey bud, you remember the boat, buddy? You remember the boat? Now you know it's time for fish, eh? Hey bud. Hey buddy. You remember the boat? Remember the boat, buddy? You're gonna get so much fish finally again. It's been a while, I know. Yeeho! Back at the old sandbar. <laughs> I don't know about you, but I feel pretty good! Bows how. I think she rides great, babe. Man, she's sitting pretty in the water there, and we're about to take her for a little test run. I've taken her offshore probably five times now, so I got a good idea of how I feel about the boat, what I like about it, how it runs different, and we're we're about to go over all those things. It's a little rainy right now. We got some drizzle, but I've been wanting to make this video all day and it's been raining for like two hours straight and there's a little space so the next rain cloud is over there so i'm gonna try to take the boat out real quick and show you all how she runs i'll put on my gopro give her a nice push Man, she does look good though, I tell you what. I love, love the new boat. It's just amazing. Damn, I hope I don't get freaking rained on. I tell you what, that doesn't look great. I'm doing this for you guys. Let's do a little speed run here. Um, you know, it's not optimal conditions. It's not flat or anything, but let's give it a try. I got trim at 0%. That, I found that to be the best for taking off in this boat, and then I trim it up to 10%, so let's hit it. And we're on plane.
All right. We hit 49 miles an hour. That was an all right little speed run there. I want y'all to see the engine. Let me see if I can strap my camera to something. We'll just do a little test run. Here we go. Look at the ocean. All I want to do is go fishing right now. <laughs> All right, let's 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 do another main run here. Let's go fast. We hit about 46 right there. Oh, there's a big cloud coming over there. Let's hit full speed and get back home and then I want to just go over a couple points. Here we go, boys and girls. I had a thing to hold my GoPro. I don't want to, I don't like taking my hand off the throttle to hold the camera. I got an idea. Let's try this angle. Hang out. I just hit 49. It's not bad. <laughs> Getting there. Probably tweak it a little bit and then it'll get real, real good. Heck yeah. Nice. All right, man, I'm gonna head home, get some work done. <laughs> Thank you. Well, we just got done with our little test run there. It wasn't really a test run. It was more of the test run for the camera because I've already been test running this boat nonstop. So here's what I gotta say. The dive platform and having the engine a little further back, everyone told me my boat was gonna handle a lot different. It was gonna ride like a bigger boat, you know, take bigger turns. It was gonna, it's just more boat, you know? You take, you take your turns bigger. And I think extending the platform to 26 inches. So the boat is 26 inches bigger than it was before. It really hardly made a difference. I don't, can't really tell a difference in terms of like, normally these mangroves, like I whip real hard around them and I still whip real hard around them. You know, I can give it real hard whips and I don't really notice uh, a handling performance difference. There are some things I do notice though. Getting up on plane is a tiny bit slower. It's still super fast. I mean, that, that Evan Rude right there pretty much shoots me out of the water. But I'd say it's like one or two seconds slower than it was before. It's like, and then it shoots me out. I used to, it felt like it just popped me up. Now it's like, and pops me up. But when I have people on the boat and fishing gear on the boat, I never 
just gun it anyways because then everyone would just fall over so that's not something I care about unless I'm solo fishing when I'm solo fishing I'm just freaking gunning it hard and having a blast and in those moments like I want it to go faster and faster but this is a fishing boat it's not a racing boat you know top end speed I've had a lot of mixed comments I've had people telling me it would increase my top speed I had people actually mainly just people telling me it would increase my top speed I'd say my top end speed is exactly the same before I had the change done I hit 50 and that was with the wind at my back and I, I was probably going with the current and I just hit 49 the wind wasn't even at my back and I think we were going against the current or it's a slack tide so I'd say uh, same top end speed but, uh, no but it's right around the corner up there to the left <laughs> Handling, I'm gonna say it's pretty much the same. Top end speed, I'm gonna say is pretty much the same. There's a ton more room in the back, which is just amazing. So handling is the same. However, the ride is different. Any speed under about 32 miles an hour, 30 miles an hour, my boat is riding a little more like this rather than this, which I actually love because the weight is further back so my boat sits a little more like this. I mean this is an extreme example but before it sat like this now it sits like this. Once I'm going about 45 plus miles an hour it, it kind of straightens out but at the lower speeds it, it rides with the bow maybe two or three inches higher than previous and I love it because it keeps me dry. We've gone out on some wavy days and since the bow is just a tiny bit higher the waves kind of blow off the side of it better we don't have waves coming over the spray doesn't come over as much and I love it it feels more like a real boat it handles the same but it feels better if that makes any sense it feels better for the passengers it feels better for me when I'm looking at the whole boat there is a ton more space back there the space is just enormous. I mean, it's it makes a huge difference. I don't know if the difference is massive on video, but in person, it's, it's a totally different boat. I have no complaints at all. I would 100% put a platform on any future boat that I'm getting. Um, at the sandbar, you can sit on it. If I get a Barracuda or something, I don't have to bring it on the boat and get the whole boat smelly. I can slide it up on the platform and de-hook it there, do whatever I have to do on the platform. And it's just a super convenient thing to have on the boat. I'm gonna tie back up to my dock here and then we'll go take a look at the dive platform. I'll talk about it a little bit, tell you what I like about it. I'm trying to think if there's anything I don't like about it, but I'm gonna think about it. Check it out, I took the, the beast out of the water. Just trailered her right on out. And let's take a look at all the parts of this project. This right here is the dive bracket. It's 26 inches wide by 80 inches long. We got the G2 Evinrude hooked right up to it. There's two drain plugs now. So that's the new drain plug for the boat bilge. And then there's a drain plug right here that goes up here. And that is to drain out the dive bracket or the bracket or the dive platform whatever you want to call it it's hollow inside that's what she looks like in there I don't usually get water in here but I think sometimes from the waves coming over this thing, a little bit of water does get in there, but nothing serious. My trim tabs are still exactly in the same place that they were originally. These are the drain holes for these cubbies here. So whatever you put in those cubbies, you want to make sure it can get wet because Water can get in there, but very little. Now, coming up to the other side, this is our transducer cord. This is our Airmar B257 low 
medium high transducer. I got a really big one for sword fishing and that cable just runs up along here. Original trim plate. This transducer can read depths up to, uh, man, I was reading bottom in 1700, 1800 feet. So that's a pretty sweet transducer. And that's the transducer cable. And this is all the wiring harnessing for the Evinrude. We were considering having the harnessing coming straight out of the center, going right to the engine. Then you wouldn't have this, it would just be straight. But then you would have it on the inside coming across, which I'll show you in a second. And it just looks so good keeping the inside clean. So we decided to do it like this. And I think it's perfectly functional how it is. These are the two plugs for the bilge pumps. This one is new and then one of them is original. We have two bilge pumps now. Let's go on inside and take a look. So originally the wall was right here to right here. So my feet could only go about that far out. So all of this is new space that I didn't have before. This is a completely custom made door that Tyrone made for us. That's the original bilge pump. That's the new bilge pump. So now I got two, they both have a float switch. If you don't know a float switch, if you get water in your bilge, it'll float up. Turn the bilge on and it'll pump all the water out of your bilge. Because now that I have a closed transom, all the water from the deck of my boat runs into this hole or into that hole. Which just comes out right there and right there. That's all there is to it. The part to fuel the boat um, had to get extended. It used to be right here, but it was extended up here now. I might cock that in or something. I bet you all want to know how much this cost me, don't you? So everything that I paid for, that includes the engine getting dismounted, this new dive bracket, the old transom getting taken off, new one getting put in, new drain holes, drain plugs, new wiring, new bilge pumps, I got some switches for those. The engine harnessing, I needed to get an extension for that because the original harnessing wouldn't reach with this extra two and a half feet of space. Then I had to get the engine remounted on it. They did some trailer work. All said and done, right at 10 grand. Finally time to start pumping some fishing videos out again. Now that I got not just one working boat, but I got two working boats. This is the John boat that I restored in the last video. And you know what? I think you guys, you watched this video to the end. You guys deserve to know. Yeah, I upgraded the horsepower on this. Remember the last video I did? We had our little weed whacker of an engine. Our little air-cooled $200 engine from eBay. Here we go. It's a 25 Johnson with a upgraded carb. So it should be putting about 30 horsepower. That'll get the John boat moving. It's got a tiller on it. We got our first fishing video coming at you guys next week. Hit that like button, hit the subscribe button if you're new here and consider going to rwboutdoors.com. Get yourself some merch, some fishing rigs, some seasonings, whatever you want. It all helps support the channel so I can uh, keep my things running and keep the videos coming. Fishing video next week on that boat right there. And until next time, cheers. <laughs>